So if you're new, what you're gonna do right now is you're going to grab your remote and make sure you have your thumb on the play button, but don't press it yet because we're all gonna do that together at the same time on the count of three. So if everybody is ready, we are going to dive in to episode nine on the count of three. Oh, are you doing the timer, Kim? Yep, I've got it. Okay, perfect. On the count of three, one, two, three. I love that hat. And great music. John, that hat needs added to our hat collection. I love her hustle here. That's a great opening scene. Just that back and forth hustle. Oh, that that might be my favorite opening so far. It almost felt a little Gilmore Girls like with the speed of the dialogue. Zelda is mad at him. Is this when that telethon began? I can't comment because that would be a spoiler. It's on for a little bit. Poor Midge. I 
I love that Ethan is eating like boxed mac and cheese. I still eat that sometimes. Oh, it's the best. I would take Ethan's dinner over theirs. Oh my gosh, she said whomping ass. I said that I all the time. I heard it. I heard it. I was like, I know that word. She said it to Ethan. <laughs> And it's that that voice, you know, just he sounds like such a little boy in this scene. It's just another aid tantrum. <laughs> uh, he's a, such a, a little... It's a good thing he has tenure. Have you guys started yet? Have you started yet? 
Yes. yes. All right. Can somebody give me a timestamp? 939. Oh, my was muted. I tried to tell you. <laughs> Sorry. Thanks. Look how short Susie looks next to him. <laughs> Susie looks short next to everybody. Except Midge even looks short next to him, but Susie looks even shorter. That's a real life version of if I was standing there. I was thinking the same thing, like... I get Susie in the scene where she's looking up at them. It's really tiring. She's directing their kissing. <laughs> it cracks me up. Well, that's the truth. She, she is kind of exhausting, isn't she? She has a lot of similarities to Lorelai in that way, that she's exhausting. It's funny to see everybody like smoking inside and all the cigarettes because, you know, before you didn't have people smoking, you know, now you don't see that anymore.
The dullness of the cheese knife would make it much more painful, so I would choose the cheese knife over a sharp knife. <laughs> well, this is part of the problem that Rose coddles him. Yeah, I was about to say, I kind of like the fact that she was trying to rationalize his threatening to stab the man. Like, with the cheese knife, it's, it's, it barely cuts cheese. She blubbers when she's thrown off, just like Lorelai does. And just keeps talking herself deeper into a hole. A cut.
If only 60 grand could buy a house now. Yeah, back then it only took like 5,000 to buy a house. You can buy houses around here for 60 to 80,000 if you're not looking for much. You buy a parking spot in some places. That's really nice of his dad not to want him to get stuck, but are we just going to gloss over the fact that his dad's been stealing money from him forever? I mean, are you surprised he was stealing money from him? The bar mitzvah money and all that always goes into a savings account that's controlled by the parents and they let you know if it's appropriate to spend on. You know, we're not allowed to really spend that money as we see fit. We're supposed to be saving that for college or for whatever we That's kind of almost, I wouldn't say traditional or, you know, I don't want to be, um, that's what happens in every household, but, you know, that's pretty much what you're expected to do and save it for college and save it for this. And sometimes by the time you get there, you forget that it's there. This is us trying to do conversions for the different time zones. I was just thinking that and temperature conversions. Don't forget <laughs> that. That's also. How do they not understand a 24-hour? Well, it's not used I to regularly. To, yeah, add on my fingers to figure it out. If you're not military, it's not used in the U.S. regularly by people. Okay, why do some of the volunteers have sashes? Are they like volunteer queens or? She might be a beauty it. queen. Oh. I was going to say some are just volunteers and some are like employees or something of some sort. Ah, John's prediction was right. Oh, yeah.
Uh oh. I thought it was I, odd that I she think brought that, that up in her set. I think we predicted that that somebody somebody mentioned it. That I did. This was that this was going to be a problem. Yep. That's oh, that's right. It was you shot. I didn't remember it though, so I wasn't didn't mean to spoil or anything. I totally didn't remember. That. Uh, we predicted he was an analyst. But why the sand in his shoes? He likes to go to the beach. I feel like the earrings she wears are out of place with her character. I knew it, it was Sophie. There, so they're performers and and stuff. So they're not wearing the volunteer sashes because they're not volunteering. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah, the actual sash says volunteer on it. Oh yeah, I I saw that. I just thought, like, did they do something special to earn that sash? Like, did they win a beauty pageant for volunteers?
Uh, this this episode has some just great song and dance. And I feel like this would be really bad for a telethon to do if they want to get performers in the future. But if they want to keep the higher profile ones like Sophie, then they got to bow to her demands. I guess, but I mean, somebody like Midge could just simply write this in her act and make the telethon look terrible for the future performer. Yeah, but but Midge you know, is they, still they would, they would, an unknown. Yeah, yeah, that's what I was gonna say. They 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 wouldn't find her to be that big of a risk. God. Jane Lynch. Oh my gosh, I love Jane Lynch. Oh, that's so cringy. So cringy. <laughs> so good. Is she in the right bathroom? <laughs> yeah, I think so. I think he's in the wrong one. Or maybe it's a co-ed bathroom. It could be. Just wait. Did she do her perfume correct, Diana? Uh, I think so.
That was like a little meat cute. I love that character. I do not understand Sophie's outfit there. I think it's just excess, excessive, and that's the point. <laughs> I don't understand Sophie's fame, because she's not funny. Yeah, me either. But then again, people love Gallagher. I don't get that either. I yeah, I mean I think the Gallagher is a good example of like that that style of of comic that is sort of formulaic and Or is she just famous now for being famous? I mean like catchphrases on television and in sitcoms, I mean they come from a place. That's something that pop culture has has had for a while and the public, you know, for the most part, seems to like it. For a second there, I thought that guy in the control room was Devin, but maybe not. I'm guessing that that's probably uh, that's probably CG or um, that's probably not a real real TV on set. They probably put that in in post. We just got our episode title.
Oh, I love that. Just a little hint of ah. a smile. Yeah. It's so good. <laughs> it's so great. It's my favorite scene of the of this set. Uh... Love it ends really well. <laughs> That was great. Is this the penultimate episode? It is. Mm -hmm. Of course it is. Was that Devin Michaels in the control room? That's what I kept wondering. You look looked like him. Look like him, yeah. No, it's Joey Slotnick. But they do look very similar. I don't get it. Why doesn't she want to go grab a drink? I don't know. I love that episode. I think that might be my favorite. He says that every time. <laughs> I think she was mad about her reopening the wound with Sophie when things had just started coming. Couch is still open mm. if anyone else wants to come up. Are they calming down, though? I mean, clearly the display at the telephone would say that they're not calming. Well, maybe she just doesn't want to stoop down to her level and, you know, she wants to be the better I person. I don't know. I mean, it, it it's, it, yeah, I mean, it seems like just one really great performance there at the end that, that it doesn't feel like things have settled down. Also, Midge is the one who started it with, you know, a pretty broad, like, routine making fun of her. It seems odd that she doesn't want to just, like, go celebrate. I mean, she had an incredible, an incredible night. I mean, I want her to go, ce I want to go celebrate with, with Susie. <laughs> well, and I think, like, Susie just feels like she's on a high in general because, you know, she got her the spot on the telethon. And then, you know, was advocating for her throughout the telethon. And then she had a great set. And so she just feels like she's had this big win as a manager. Yeah, I mean, I would argue that she has. 
you know. I think it's weird that, that Midge would want to celebrate with I think Midge still doesn't quite get something about show business, which is, you know, or really any business in, in which, like, there are methods to the madness, you know, like Susie seems to have this innate knowledge of like what it takes to like get ahead in this business. And she knows that like, they're not quite there yet. So the hustle is really strong because she, she knows she's got to put herself out there and, and, you know, sometimes be uncomfortable with like that, you know? And so bursting into the the control room or scooting around the diner, like, you know, you know, figuring out who to talk to, to make something happen. You know, she's, she's the one putting herself out there. And Midge, I think still kind of wants to play by the rules of, you know, regular life and decorum and like you know let's just let that go because we can't you know I don't want to I don't want to get messy in a way but like I feel like Susie knows that no matter what they do it's going to be a little bit messy and sometimes you have to you actually have to put a little bit more elbow grease into it you know and sometimes people aren't going to like you or sometimes you're going to have to tell somebody off or sometimes you're going to have to you know, burst into the control room and piss people off. And, you know, I love that at the end, they're all like friends with her because it shows that she, she did the thing that you need to do, which is, you know, be aggressive and, um, you know, do whatever it takes to get her client in front of, you know, in front of the right audience and, and having the best shot. But I think part of the reasons um, that uh, Midge is out of touch with that is because, a lot of work has gone into this before she actually even met Midge, right? She's already fostered a lot of relationships and and connections and networking that she is now using. And of course, Midge didn't see all of that. Yeah, absolutely. And it's really funny too, because if you think about Midge in the very beginning and how she hustles too, right? Like, you know, she hustles at the butcher to get, you know, to get what she needs and she gets the rabbi and and then she hustles for Joel getting the right spot, but she does it all in a different way. Like her way is very, you know, um, nice and, you know, charming and Susie's just not charming. And so I think she has, you know, they're, they're always going to be a little bit at odds at, you know, how to get something done. And, um, you know, I mean, clearly Susie won this time. Like clearly Susie knew the best way to go about it. She got her on the telethon and she got her, you know, like, and she, you know, she said what she needed to say because they got screwed, you know? And so it's, it's actually, I think it's really interesting to like see that, you know, both of them have, have hustle in them, but like they achieve it in very different ways. Well, yeah. And I mean, clearly Midge's way is, is what she's learned from her mother. Right. Right. Um, Cause you know, we saw that in this episode with the, uh, after the, um, I don't know, was, was it the Dean or I can't remember what his title was, came to talk to Abe and she's like, Oh, he likes that jelly. We'll send him that jelly. Um, and you know, so she's, taught that to me is it also possible though that um midge's reaction at the end was more of a why'd you go and poke the hornet's nest because clearly midge now knows that sophie's the one that sent the goons to try to kill or rough up or whatever Susie. and so now midge is like i don't understand why you have to like we're winning why do you have to, you know, poke the hornet's nest, so to speak? I feel like they 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 know that Sophie will just continue stirring the pot. So, yeah, she might be like, why are you doing this? Even it's just going to make it worse. But I think, honestly, that they probably both thought that everybody had kind of put it behind them and moved on. And because it's, I can't remember how long they said it's been, but it's been a while since that happened. And so, you know, 
now Susie realizes, okay, this is not over. And so, you know, just trying to let it go and lay low hasn't worked. So she's trying a different tactic. I mean, Sophie realizes that Midge is talented and she feels threatened. So she's going to do what she can to maintain her spot. I don't know. I'm not, I, I'm not completely convinced that that, I, I think that, I think that maybe, I don't know, but it, it seems conceivable to think that perhaps with, with Susie, with Susie getting in her face like that, that, that might be, might be speaking a language that Sophie understands and that, that, that so Sophie may actually respect it. Not not like respect them, but just might be like, all right, fine. I'm gonna I'm gonna lay off of at least that kind of stuff. Yeah, that's what I mean, I mean by trying a different tactic. Yeah, yeah and I, and look, I mean, if if Midge starts to become famous, then then all of her power is stripped anyway. And and you know this 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 showing that she had here on television seems to it it seems to be the start of of that and. It was an example of how even the tactics that she that she chose they didn't actually they weren't actually effective. She, her, she went on at eleven, and her talent ended up making it. So she could come up with some other tactic, and Midge could get around it and still be become famous. And if she was, it would it would end up probably being worse for Sophie in the long run. So I could see I could see Sophie quitting at this point like quit quitting her her beef with them i i i i don't i don't i don't i don't i don't, I don't foresee jane lynch being in the next season i'll say that i i completely agree with that i just don't know if midge sees it like that and so midge might be a little um put off by the fact that susie went to talk to sophie I'm just bummed that they didn't get a drink together. I I would have, I would have, I kind of wanted to, ce- I I wanted to celebrate with them as well, just because I, you know, that 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 final thing there with her doing her routine on the telethon is really like a, I think climax of the season. It's so exciting. Yeah, it's we, what you've been waiting for. We see a little bit of like acceptance in her parents' eyes. Um, for what she's doing because they realize that she's good at it. And um, does anyone have any opinions on how her husband reacted? Yeah, I was con- I was like a little question marky there. What w- what was going on there? That was uh, and what did he pull out of the out of the desk? At first, I thought I, I first yeah. I thought it was uh, it, it was a check. It was the yeah, check, check, right? Yeah, the check from his dad. Right? Yeah. What in the world was the going on there? The wheels are turning. The wheels are turning. Yeah, I think we you don't think that know. He's... I think we're not supposed to know. Do you exactly. think that he's maybe thinking about using the check f- for her, like I becoming so. maybe like an like an investor or something like like you know helping to to like you know invest in her career or something like Like, her on tour or send her on tour, just some something that you know would get like a solid return on that 60,000 that he's thinking like that's where I place this money like that's a sure win yeah it's clearly got to be connected to her and the comedy you know given that we see him pull it out as he's watching her um so yeah I think he he's thinking about business opportunities I agree, and I think we need to hand it to the actor. Like, I think, um, I think he's incredible. I, I'm a huge fan. Oh, I of him. love him so much. I love I, him. I really, I really think like he's, him too. Much. He's incredible on this show. He's really. So good. And he's I'm a little a sad because too, right? Like, it, yeah, it's but interesting all the different types of hustling that that they all have. Yeah, and like, oh, I'm so sad because he was. <laughs> they did like a panel at 92nd Street Y last week and I just forgot to go like I could have seen a, them in person and like 
he's so god he's so good and i he, I was really paying attention to the way he reacted and the way he played the scene because he he sort of you know when the when the girl comes out like oh who's that oh it's my wife like he doesn't say it lovingly he doesn't say it in a way that's like you know wistful in any in any way he's like very factual about it very, like that's my wife yeah it's wheels are turning you can already yeah. see wheels are turning while he's watching my wife yeah and like, the way <laughs> he's watching her is almost like you know in a in a like a critical not a critical like you know um criticizing but like in a critical like okay she's got something what can we do to figure this out to make you know to like you know she's clearly like okay obviously she's a star like what's next you know and he's sort of working that out i don't think he's jealous i don't think he's in love anymore i think he is so like committed to the team you know like team midge Maisel, and is just sort of like all right like this is you know he seems pretty set up he's got this you know he bought the building he's got everything he you know he's got a place to live and a place to work he figured it out for himself he's fine and he's just sort of like oh all right like i don't know it's just the the growth in the character is just evident on his face in that in that scene that is just so incredible i love that scene when he's just so matter of fact about yeah, yeah, that's my wife. Like, all right, like let let's take take a look at this check. What should I do with it? It's so good. What I find very interesting is that you just said you forgot to go to a panel. Like, oh yeah, yeah I forgot to go <laughs> see these people in person that are really cool on TV. Like, I just forgot. Yeah, I do yeah, I know. It's well, I mean, I think, you know, it's partly there's always stuff going on here, but also like Was it a Maisel panel? Pandemic. Yeah, it was the it was um ninety second street where I did a panel for the um you know, the premiere of season four, um, and they did it both in person and broadcasted online and I forgot to go to both. So I unfortunately online. I was thinking about doing the online one, but then it was like at the same time it was conflicting with our remarks. Yeah. That. that was part of it. Actually. <laughs> I was like, well, I, if I go, I, I might miss our episode. You had to make hard decisions. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, don't worry. Like, I, I, don't yeah. worry. We'll have, don't worry. We'll have them here doing a panel. I'm with us sure. I'm I sure. feel really like, I feel really special to be part of a group that you guys would miss a panel like that just to be with us. <laughs> you know what I think it is actually like, I think for two years there's nothing going on in the city because of pandemic. And like, I, now I forget that like things are happening again. It's just like, Oh yeah. Like I forgot about that. But anyway, yeah, yeah no, they the did a routine. I'm out of the routine. They did yeah. a panel and I'm, I, you know, unfortunately it's not up online yet, so we can't really watch it, but, um, but it might be someday. Um, but yeah, I, I just, I love Michael Zegan. I like pray to meet him on the street somewhere. <laughs> he's just so great. I think he's doing a play right now in New York. And I also love the scene with Abe. I love that he watches her on television through the window to another apartment. That is such like a New York thing to to like be able to see someone else's television. But like the fact that he he gets up to see his daughter on a TV in someone else's home is such a big moment, I think. I think it's so incredible to see that look on his face because not only is he is she on his own tv but like he's sort of understanding the magnitude that she's on everybody's tv and that's what people are watching at this very moment it's it's really really cool wait and and rose was not in the 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 room that he was in watching it no so she must have been watching it on her own television yeah also like how house. bougie are the mazels they have like two right televisions. <laughs> that's exactly what i was thinking well i mean i know that that was a thing early on in the series was getting the two televisions and he was like i right. will not be a two television household but in the end he ends up getting the two televisions but right. um that was that was an interesting moment We also got a little bit of the origin and the other use of the tits up phrase that everyone loves. And um, a little yes. bit of Mitch causing trouble for her dad and Bell Labs. 
Yes, we talked about that um, when she started doing it. Shelly brought it up. I, I mean, I, it, it's, it seemed like an obvious thing that was going to come back and bite them in some way. I don't know how bad it's going to bite them, but, but yeah, I mean, really um, interesting. I, it, I feel like, I feel like something big is coming for Abe. I don't, I'm not sure exactly what it is, something, but it, it feels like, it feels like Abe is sort of coming to a head, like that there's something like about to burst. Um, and, and all of this stress and what is, is, is a lead up to it. And I don't know exactly what it is, but I think that something's kind of going to happen, um, with Abe, like maybe he does get somehow fired from the university. I mean, is it possible? Is it, is it really truly impossible that if you're tenured, you cannot in under any circumstances be fired? I think back then, the, yeah, I, I feel like it would be really hard to fire him. I mean, unless he, like, I don't know, stole from the university or something. Right. I can't imagine. I mean, like, sexual harassment wasn't a thing, really, in the 1950s. Like, he could probably stay forever um, unless he, like, I don't know, like, embezzled money from the university or something. Well, maybe it might be just as simple as, like, the Bell Labs thing falls apart and he's back to just only having the, I guess it would be just one salary from the, from the university. Would that, would that be big? I don't know. Something's, something, it feels like something's going to happen to, to, um, to, to Abe. I don't know. He was getting pretty, uh, that was a very violent threat to that guy. <laughs> yeah. He's going to fly somebody. <laughs> he's going to really fly off the handle no i don't think that'll happen but i mean they could continue paying him because of his tenure and just ask him to leave so they That's don't have to true. deal with him they could do that right they, they could do that yeah yeah i mean it's just i mean he's he is he is a really terrible teacher <laughs> he's terrible um and and it's just it feels like his whole world is sort of just crashing in around him I do enjoy that this show keeps like turning phrases and concepts around to look at them differently. So like tits up, you know, like I, I enjoy the fact that they're giving it the meaning here of like, it's belly up basically that it's, it's over, it's dead. Whereas, you know, obviously Midge and, and Susie are using it as a, like a, you know, uh, a rallying call like okay like tits up let's go and like it, the same for like mrs Maisel, you know like just turning that phrase around to be something positive that you know that or or just something different that she can sort of rely on and like i don't know create new meaning for you know what does it mean to be mrs Maisel? well in the you know in the beginning it means to be joel's wife but in here but here it means to be successful comedian so you know I, I just I like the idea of like using phrases and turning them around and, and presenting new meanings to us as viewers to like figure out what we think or what we want them to mean, I guess. I, I like I like that it could be both for for me yes. because it's like her rally cry to get her going. And then if she bombs, well, it went tits up. So, <laughs> yeah. Uh, did we talk about the intro to Shy? No, but how dreamy is he? Intro. Well, she she got to meet him for the first time. She's been a fan. She saw him on. But it could, uh, but not intro to the to the series. It's just it's just a one time. That's just a one time. Um, we don't know. I'm just saying, she's an intro to him. I for hope her. we see him again. I liked him. Well, that definitely that had we'll an again. air of a meet cute. Like I, I think I said that during the watch. Um, yeah, it seemed to have a little something more. To do we think what? What do we think could come of it if he did stick around? He's gonna bring her on tour with him. Okay, that's a good prediction. Romantic interest. Is it a good prediction because he's right? 
or is it just a oh that's yeah that could work I mean out. I mean I feel I just, like I feel like um I feel like that bathroom scene was significant. I mean I'm 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 just uh I'm just um playing when I say about the intro thing. I mean it's so clear that it's an intro. Like absolutely clear intro character on the show. Because it, it, like I think that's a good prediction just on the fact that like it seems realistic. Like we don't know what's going to happen, yeah, but I'm I think just, it's realistic to think that that could to happen. I'm catch you in a spoiler because I want to know, but I don't want to watch ahead. But I really want to know. So I'm but hoping he, you would give me more. I mean, he he's like he's like an ally. He he's an ally in that they both they both don't like Sophie. Um, you know, he's you know she's super like starstruck by him. Um, it has a, it has a very Lenny Bruce quality to it. It has this very much like we're introing a character that we're going to be bringing back that, you know, that, that, you know, that, that Midge has this sort of connection to I, my guess. He saw her, he saw her on TV, like, like everybody else in the nation did <laughs> because it was a huge thing. And he was definitely still up because he was, you know, I mean, he's a performer. He was probably at a bar watching it or whatnot. And she was amazing and he met her in the bathroom. So they already have this connection. Um, he knows that she's nothing like the comedians. He can't stand. And he said, I open my, my shows with comedians. So there we go. Like all those pieces together seems to, seems to, to, um, seems to fit the, the puzzle. Do you think there could be a connection, John, between that and maybe what Joel's thinking? Yes, I think so. I mean, now I do. <laughs> I didn't really know what was going on there with Joel, but now after talking about it, it's, it seems like, yeah, like there's going to be some sort of, some sort of, he's going to use that money for her to maybe, maybe she needs money. Like maybe, well, no, because if she went on tour with, like if, if she went on tour with Shy, then likely he would have money to pay for her to go on tour. So I'm not exactly sure now what that sixty thousand would be if 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 it was Shy. Maybe maybe the sixty thousand is to do something different, and she turns it down in order to. I don't know. I guess we'll have hmm. to wait and see. But these are all really good. Um, predictions. I think he's going to use it to invest in his own plastics company. <laughs> since, since that's what the industry. Has. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, it's very, it's, you know, it's, it's possible that he was looking at that check and thinking that maybe, maybe he was thinking about investing in something that, you know, it's something that he's good at or wants to, you know, like maybe he's yeah. seeing Midge and he's inspired by her, like right, not, not, you know, like he's thinking like, look, you're doing what you want to be doing. Like, let me invest in what I want to be doing. I don't know. Maybe that's, maybe no, that's off I think base. What the heck does he want to be doing? I, think <laughs> I don't even really know. I think you're onto something. I think like that look that he gives could actually be that, which is, I was worried about her. She's clearly okay. Yeah, now what do I want to do? That's it. Oh, there we go. There we go. I like that. Okay. I like that. That, that's, that's good. And That's I think good. it's another piece in him knowing that she is moving on and, and making a new life for herself. Speaking yeah. of which, what about that engagement conversation with Benjamin? Ooh. Yes. And yes. and that seems like that seems like prediction. That prediction is right on track <laughs> to to have that relationship end next episode. Bye bye, Benjamin. You're done. Yeah. I was just still a little shocked by how caught off guard she was about him meeting Ethan. Like, because even though, like, he says, oh, if we were to get engaged, could I meet him? And, and she said, yes. It still almost feels to me like she wants to keep him separate from her real everyday life. Oh, yeah, for sure. That's, how, that's definitely how it read. It's like she doesn't, and, uh, and she doesn't probably it was, to know. 
like she's she's worried about hurting Joel's feelings for some reason. Is what I yeah yeah it. because I think because I think that she still has feelings for Joel. But also, I mean, he did just show up out of nowhere. Like you know, like he did he did just just arrive right. Hello. Yeah, I. Sorry. Go ahead. No, I was just gonna say I feel like he's scheming with her mother a little bit. Yeah, (laughs) I mean, I just did. I get that wrong that he like he found out that she was there through Rose and he went and and yeah. No, you're right. And that was terribly weird. That was very much like what in the world? Maybe maybe Rose was like, "Oh, go see her." You know, who knows how pushy she was to say oh yes that'll be just fine go you know well, well didn't clearly she say Rose in her because in her like the previous episode get engaged like just, yeah, just right. yeah. find a man yeah. like yeah her yeah. measure of success of her daughter is that she is you know married to um a, a, a jewish guy you and know he's with a, a doctor name. and you know so welcome to the 50s yeah, I mean, if you like, if you take like shows up un, un, unannounced, uninvited, because her mother told him about it, you mix that with a question about being engaged, and you add that to everything that's going on in Midge's life outside of relationships and all of that kind of stuff, and it just seems like a recipe for. Bye bye, Benjamin. <laughs> you're you're out of here. I also love that in the club, you know, Susie is questioning his very taste. You know, like he's like, no, don't laugh at that. That wasn't funny. But you know, and I I feel like there's Joel who was like completely unaccepting of her comedy career in the beginning, and then there's Benjamin who's like totally all for it, like almost too much. And it's kind of funny that that Susie's sort of dressing him down for like his very taste, you know, in in the joke. Um, I thought that was really amusing. I, I didn't enjoy this episode as much as I thought I did, but then after the discussion, I think I'm warmed up to it a bit more. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's my favorite episode. Yeah, in the beginning, I actually, like, in the beginning, I actually didn't like it very much. Um, I was a little bored by it. But I think that the telethon sort of redeemed it for me. But I didn't like the beginning parts. I was a little bored. It, I, I don't know. I liked the opening, but then after that, I was like, eh, I'm kind of bored. I think the opening um, primed I, I me. I like the end. The opening primed me for the episode, I think. I, I, I loved that opening so much. I was pretty tired going into this episode because I'd woken up like maybe three minutes before we, uh, we began. Um, and that opener just woke me up and I was ready to go. It was a really good opening. I like that opening. But I didn't care for the repetitive, like I get the point of it, but the whole thing with Susie keep going into the like booth up top and them kicking her out and like I was just it was a little too much I was like why too many times <laughs> but I think that it was speaking to what, exactly what Diana was talking about which I totally get this idea that y- you really hustling in, in in an industry like this does require a certain kind of crazy perseverance you kind of just have to believe that you that you are good enough to to do it so much so that it makes you do sort of crazy things like that and she was definitely the squeaky wheel yeah i mean and and just the the bottom line is like in hollywood in entertainment squeaky wheel just does get the oil and and it's just true and i think it's partly because it's partly because that hustle even if it annoys people, it also like somewhere deep inside, it, people admire it. They they yeah, they impressive. view it at they they view it as somebody who is resilient. That person's crazy. They will not stop. 
It's annoying, but you know what? I should probably put my money on that person because if they will not stop, it means that they'll probably keep going and they'll make my money worth it. You know, that's, that's sort of the thinking. Even if you don't like the person, even if you're like, oh, I can't stand them, but smart money is on the person who's just will not quit, just will not quit. And that's, you, that's the reason why, you know, the industry, why, why the term hustle even exists in industries like this. And Susie even tells Sophie, like, you know, every wall that you put up, I'm going to tear down. And she says it, you know, um, and I, I love that confrontation because it's I'm not going to, you know, be intimidated by you. I don't care how successful you are. I'm going to keep going. This is my, you know, it's her life on the line, basically. And she's just like, nope, you're not going to, you're not going to intimidate me. And I'm just going to keep going. So throw me, throw me your worst because, you know, everything that we do, we're not going to be intimidated. And, you know, it kind of works because, you know, even though Sophie did everything she could do to screw Midge at the telethon, like Midge still won. Like she's still closed you know she was the closer she closed the show on that high note which is a huge position of power in you know in any show is you are the person who gets to finish it strong that's what people talk about they're not going to be talking about sophie lennon tomorrow and her old jokes as shy would said you know like oh she's doing those jokes when i was a kid you know midge won she she is going to be the the person that everyone is talking about tomorrow morning and that's just how it goes yeah, and, I, and I think that Sophie. yeah, and I think that jo- that that's why I say I think Sophie get will get it, and she'll be like, all right, whatever, you know, <laughs> like move move on, you know. I think that she was ready to crush her when she thought it was an easy bug to crush, and now that she realizes it's not an easy bug to crush, I'm sure she's just like, I I, I don't need to even like put much energy into this person anymore. I'm gonna just move on. And I, I don't I don't see her a part of the story much at all anymore. I just want to remind everyone that you have about 15 minutes left to harvest. Uh, and I'm actually going to head out. I've got some uh, some house duties to attend to. I've got some backyard, some backyard leaf vacuuming that I need to do today. And I want to do that before we, it gets too hot out. And it's also harvest time. And it is harvest time. Yes. Um, so thank you, uh, Kim, Nikki, um, for hosting. Um, I usually like, I, I love pen, penultimate episodes. That's like my, that, those are usually my favorite in a season. So it's not surprising that this episode is, is my, I think, I think my favorite of the season. Yeah. Maybe and Kendra my, and Nancy are taking us home on Tuesday. Yes. Yes. We I'm are. super excited. <laughs> and then, and then. And then we begin season three next Saturday, 9 a.m. We're going to be doing again Saturday and Sunday uh, marathon till um, till the, the the release of season four, which is it's going to be awesome. We're going to be watching that. Um, all right. I will see you all uh, very soon on the discords in the clubhouses. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Thanks for coming, everyone. Thanks for Thanks coming. Thanks for hosting. Thanks, guys. Kim and Nikki. Thank you for hosting, Kim and Nikki. I look forward to uh, the finale on Tuesday, <laughs> Nancy and Kendra. Thank you. Oh, me too. Me too. too. <laughs> me it's too a excited. really good episode. <laughs> Can you tell Kendra and I are very excited to host? <laughs> I'm I super excited. And I'm typically not <laughs> excited to host because I'm so nervous. Not this time. It's that good. Everybody come back. It will be worth it. You will love it.